All set, are you, Strickland? Uh, all set, sir. Blue movies, Molly. Think you can stand it? Probably seen more than we have. Hmm? Right. I'm going to show you two bits of your collateral, without which I wouldn't believe a word of it. All right, Strickland. Act one, scene one. Close your eyes, Molly. And here they are, the four of them. Rollicking about. These girls put on quite a turn, I think, for hookers. Here's the burn. Somebody's turned the lights up. Probably Kretschmer. And Leipzig's saying, gotcha. All right, wind it on, Strickland. We can watch the rest some other time. But what's there is enough to have Kirov scalped in Moscow, right, Molly? It certainly would on Carla's side of the house. And all right. Now, this is about what? An hour later, they're back into their city suits? Uh, 41 minutes, 20 seconds. At a go. I like that bit. So, now... Care of Sings, story of his life. All right, switch it off, Strickland. Get us a drink. Scotch, everyone. George? I'll pass, thank you. All right. Four, then. Ice and water. What the hell are they? Ah. Yeah. Lutty things. <laughs> okay. Common ground. It's not a fake, right, Molly? Not unless Kirov was collaborating in a piece of fabrication. You mean Kirov and Leipzig stinging us, cooking up a tail together, earning a few bob on the side? I say. You have got a dirty mind. I don't think it's a serious possibility. All right, here we go. The nub of it. Brother Kirov's lament. Followed by, here we are, Brother Kirov's confession. Ow. All comfortable? Snug as a boat, Chief. Ears pinned back, George. Page 69. Sorry about that. Didn't hear me. Never mind. I'm Kirov. The 13th Directorate is a secret service within Moscow Center. Thanks, we all knew that. Its task is the placing and servicing of illegal agents under deep cover in fascist countries, known also as moles. Shades of bloody Bill Hayden. Huh? Sorry, George. You'd think a man making his deathbed confession would have the grace to keep it brief, wouldn't you? But oh, no. Not our cure. So, over to page hundred and something two. Off we go again. In the course of my general investigations into financial irregularities in Moscow's centre, two officers of Carla's directorate came into question. As a result of my activities, both were summarily executed, and I thus came personally to the attention of Carla himself. That tallies, does it, Molly? Grade four reports of that period confirmed, Chief. What does that mean, darling? It means maybe, Chief. All right over there, George. You look a bit bilious. Me? Uh, oh, oh, yes, thank you. Quite all right. We're not too rich for your blood, eh? Good. Right. Chapter two. Carla summons Kirov to his lair in the forest. Heart in mouth, Kirov comes running. Tit a tit. No witnesses, small wooden hut, monastic atmosphere, no trimmings. Carla goes to the nub. How would Kirov like a posting to Europe? Kirov would like it very much. Creep, crawl, creep. Mm. Strickland, check people's glasses, will you? Interesting. Kira thought Carla looked twitchy, under stress, smoking like a chimney. He always did that. Did what? He was always an excessive smoker. 
Was it, by God? Was it? Didn't think he had any vices. Blah, blah, blah. For my night work, I would be responsible for the conduct and control of financial accounts in all the outstations of the 13th Directorate in the following cities. And then he goes on. Thanks. He goes on to name them Bonn, Hamburg, et al. Peter. Yes? Not losing you in the labyrinth, are we? No, sir. Because I shall want you to hold on to George's coattails in this. You know that, John? No, sir. Well, you know now. Okay. Here's the $64 one. Carla also warned me I would be required to find cover backgrounds or legends for future agents. Now we're at the bone. And we adds a note for cretins. A legend is Moscow sent a jargon for a spy's biography. Thank you, Oleg. George! Saul? Let yourself go. Have a scotch. If you insist. Good. Away we go again. I had not been in Paris long when a personal signal from Carla advised me a legend was required urgently for a female agent age about 26 years. Carla's signal referred me to several emigre families who might be persuaded by pressure <laughs> to adopt such an agent as their own child, since blackmail is considered preferable technique to bribery. Damn right it is. Cheers. The current rate of inflation, blackmail is about the only thing that holds its value. <laughs> Interregnum, care of Judith trolls the emigres. Without result, Carla exhorts Kirov to greater efforts. Kirov strives still harder and goofs again. Kirov was no good, was he, George? No. Carla didn't dare trust his own chaps. That's your point. And so he had to go out to the sticks and recruit an ape like Kirov. Yes. A clod. Not a bloke who'd never make Sarat. Oh, that reminds me, George. Did you twist that fellow Mostyn's tail by any chance? What do you mean? Yes, I thought so. That's why I sacked him. Tried to sell him to the BBC, but they wouldn't have him. What's he up to now, Strickland? He's in retreat, sir. Joined an order of Franciscan monks near Ipswich. Ipswich? Cold bloody spot to pray. The point is, I suppose, having set up his apparatus, trained it to accept his iron rule, Carla didn't dare use it for this deal. That's your point? That's my point. Ergo, we're dealing with a bunch of ninnies, not red-toothed hoods. Not ninnies, just ordinary people. You mean hoods aren't? Carla was under stress. He had to take risks. Like bumping chaps off. That was more recent. You're bloody forgiving these days, aren't you, George? Am I? If you say so. And bloody meek, too. Molly? Yes, Chief? You checked this last lot as well, did you? Yes, and it fits, Chief. Rather. After I had been unsuccessful for some time to find a legend... Oh, my Lord alive, this prose. To find a legend, Carla again summoned me to his presence and drew my attention to the case of the woman Ostrakova, whose unacknowledged daughter was a citizen of the Soviet Union. Following my approach to Ostrakova and the formal issuing of a French permit to her daughter Alexandra, I was instructed to set aside immediately 10,000 American dollars a month from the Paris impress. The monthly payment was not expended by myself, but transferred to a bank in Thun in the Swiss canton of Bern. The transfer is made by standing orders to the credit of Dr. Adolf Glaser. Glaser is the work name of the commercial councillor at the Soviet embassy in Bern. His real name is Grigoriev. I know this because Carla told me in case there were complications. This is all I know. 
except there is a nice little P.S. Otto, my friend, I beg you to preserve these confidences. They could kill me. <laughs> He's right, they did. That's Kirov's last will and testament, you might say. Well, that's it, George. Yes. Molly, watch my every move, will you? Well, I'm still going to spell it out because I'm thick. One. Ostrakova writes to Vladimir. Her message rings old bells. Two. Vladimir sends a copy of her letter to Otto Leipzig. Three. Leipzig roars off to Paris, gets confirmation from Ostrakova. Yes, it is Oleg Kirov on the warpath again. Four. Leipzig gooses Kirov in Hamburg. Burns him rotten. All right so far, everyone. Peter, still stumbling after me, are you? I think so, sir. How's marriage? Blissful, thank you, sir. Give it three years. Onward and upward. Leipzig burns Kirov rotten and gets word back to Vladimir. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Carla smells a rat. He sends for Kirov back to Moscow under the pretext of promotion, but swings him by the ears. Kirov sings, as I would, fast. Now, Carla tries to get the toothpaste back into the tube. He kills Vladimir while he's on his way to our rendezvous. Kills Leipzig. Tries to flatten the old lady, only wings her. What's his mood now? Impatient. But why doesn't he dig up his treasure, put it somewhere else and cover his traces? The shit's in the fan. He knows that. Kirov's confessed. Perhaps the treasure refuses to be moved. Perhaps Carla's options have run out. It's daylight madness to keep that Swiss bank account intact. It was daylight madness to use a fool like Kirov. It was madness to approach Ostrakova, a madness to believe that by killing three people, he could stop the leak. And Carla does believe it or Grigoriev would not still be in Bern, which Strickland says he is. As of today, Councillor Grigoriev of the Soviet Embassy in Bern is alive and well and on post. Then moving the bank account would be totally unnecessary. So what is Carla up to? Giving himself a pension? I mean, we all want a bit to retire on, but jeepers. Has he got a bird somewhere? Who's worth ten grand a month in his whole damn career? It's simply a question of whether your service wants the product. Personally, I can't see that anything else is of any importance. Can't you? Can't you, by God? Oh, I want him all right. I want the Mona Lisa and the chairman of the Chinese People's Republic. I want Carla sitting in the hot seat at Salad, coughing out his life story to the Inquisitor. I want the American cousins eating out of my hand for years to come. I want the whole ball game, of course I'd... It isn't some wicked, bullshit plot, is it, George? To lure us to our ultimate destruction. I'm afraid we're no longer worth the candles or... <laughs> All right, Maud. Leave these people to their privacy. Let's go into the garden. You'll need people. Babysitters, lamp lighters, all the forbidden toys, that sort of thing. Don't talk to me about it. Find them yourself. Money's a different matter. I can lose you in accounts for years, the way these clowns in Treasury work. Just let me know when, where, and how much. I'll do a carla and fiddle the accounts. How about passports and stuff? Do you need any addresses? I can manage, thank you. I shall watch you. Day and night. If this plan aborts and there's a scandal, I'm not going to have anybody telling me I should have staked you out. I shall just say, the whole catastrophe is a ludicrous piece of private enterprise by a senile spy who's lost his marbles. Oh, this chap in Bern, the one who's getting the cash, Grigoriev. He's your next stop, is he? What's his record? Pure as the driven snow, one of the very few. Straight up and down commercial counselor. 
He used to be an economics don in some Bolshe university. His wife's a harridan. I'll want Toby Esterhazy. He's a crook. Yes, he is. I want a safe house near London Airport, too. Willem can find it. Talk to Strickland. I think we'll just rent it ourselves, if you don't mind, and send you the bill. Millie McCraig to come and manage it. I want all the papers, particularly anything on Gregorius' behavior patterns. I want the Carla papers, too. Since you wrote them in the first place, I suppose I can hardly refuse. Anything else? If there is, I'll let you know. Meanwhile, you have my totally deniable blessing. Thank you. Who's this Millie McCraig? Someone special? Just your best housekeeper. And your oldest. Concerning Lakin. What about him? He's a little leaky these days. Doesn't know whether he's a hare or a hound. I don't want him to know a damn thing. So I assume. Sorry you've become an instrument in the imperial hypocrisy, but there's rather a lot of it about. How's Anne? Well, thank you. Carla's still got that cigarette lighter she gave you. Still using it, is he? Pretty grating, I'd find that, if it were mine. So I imagine. What was that all about? Carla pinch it from you, do you? Or do you give it to him in a weak moment? Well, what happened? You were interrogating him, weren't you, at in Delhi. That time he gave you the slip. It was just an ordinary Ronson. Still, they were made to last, weren't they? She lets me have the whole top floor, 5,000 francs a month, special price. I'll say it's special. Is there anything to go? No, not till next week. How many people will you need to manage? Uh, for a lace curtain job, 24 hours a day, George, I need 12 people. Less, I cut my throat. Four teams of three, minimum. Do they get a special price too? For George, they do it for nothing. You've got no Western prospect. How do you get over that? Ah, George, leave it to me. You hire Toby Esterhazy, you have a Toby Esterhazy service. Huh? Now, cars, Toby, I don't think we can just rely on stealing Swiss postal vans, economic though it may be. George. It's the one that used to hang in your room. Saul must have dumped it there. You want a picture of Carla, George? I get you one. More up to date than that. Authentic provenance, no question. Shut up. Thank you, Toby. I'm only interested in the original. Now, George, do you think we set our women up too high? Hmm? Is that where we English middle-class chaps go wrong? Well, it may be, Oliver, yes. Well, if it isn't, why does Val always fall for shits? We were always taught that women had to be cherished. If you didn't make them feel loved every moment of the day, you'd go off the rails. But this chap vows with, well, she annoys him. Speaks out of turn. The lag is not given a black eye. You and I never do that. Do we? Oh, I'm sure we don't. Grazie, signori. Look here. 
Look here. Do you think if I went and saw her, bearded her in his house, took a really tough line, threatened legal action and so forth, that might tip the scales? <laughs> I mean, I'm bigger than he is, God knows. I'm not without clout, whichever way you read me. Well, have a good holiday anyway. You deserve it. Going somewhere warm? Oh, I thought I'd just take off and wander. Oh, lucky you. My God, I envy you a freedom. Well, you've been jolly useful. I shall follow your advice to the letter. But, Oliver, I didn't give you any advice. And uh, that other business is all squared away, I hear from Saul? No loose ends, no messiness. Chelsea. George, bless you, you've been a brick. We're birds of a feather, George. Both patriots, givers, not takers. Trained to our services, country. We must pay the price. You know, if Anne had been your agent instead of your wife, you'd probably have run her pretty well. Hello, oh, Mrs. Trevor. Hello, Harry. How's bloody London? Bloody as usual. Mm. Looks it. Thanks a lot. He's not like he used to be at all, is he, though? He's not a death duty, it's his temper. None of his own children won't come see him anymore. Only his niece. short walk would be nice. Just nice. I'd like a walk very much. Can you wear Harry's boots? I always used to be able to. You can take his coat as well. It's those logs, Mrs. Tremetta. They must be damp or something. I'll never dig burn. Dead or alive. Saul Enderby still run the ship? 
if you can call it running. You used to say they were the people who ruined England. Did I? Who were they in those days? I forget. Most of my family, including Uncle Hat. What did they do wrong? Stayed the same, I suppose. Missed the changes. Wouldn't face them. Left the future up for grabs. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. It was a hundred years ago. I'm going away for a bit. I didn't want to say anything on the telephone. Abroad? Just a job I have to do. I don't want you going to Bywater Street in my absence. Is that why you came down to tell me that Bywater Street is out of bounds? In a way. Let me try it differently. If Bywater Street had been in bounds, would you have suggested that I went there? Or are you telling me that Bywater Street is out of bounds for good? Practicalities. It's a practical question. How long will you be away? Weeks. Longer, perhaps. Where will you stay? In a hotel. Then back to Bywater Street? If it hasn't been blown up. <laughs> Is it your black grail? Black grail. Right. Bill Hayden's phrase. Is it? Why won't you tell me anything anymore? Do you really think I told Bill Hayden anything about you? Wasn't much he didn't know. I'm all you've got, George. I'm all there is. There isn't anything else. I want to stop looking. I want you to do the same. Oh, for God's sake, let's pull down the shutters and be a boring, married couple. I came to tell you that while I'm away, well, it's widely known within the intelligence fraternity, on all sides, that you used to be dear to me. So you and I are both at risk while I'm away. I don't want anyone taking hostages or revenge. You don't say. I want you to stay here and lie low and not go to London. I'm sending a couple of chaps to watch over you. I have to leave now. The big one's Arthur, and the other's called something else. They'll be here this afternoon. I'm afraid they'll haunt the place and drive your Uncle Harry mad. And afterwards, George? Goodbye. Thank Harry for his things. Thank you, Ferguson. Don't want it too tidy, do we? Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye, Millie. How was she? Fine, was fine. I can't come, George. Saul says I'm not deniable enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? No, I don't think so, thank you. You got a box of matches by any chance?
first visit to Birdsville? Yes, yes, I'm afraid it is. Please sign here, Mr. Balaclough. Balaclough. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Balaclough, of course. Thank you. Number 18, half a mile on the right. The Gagoyevs have got the ground floor. Who's above them? Two old women, university teachers. Most of the Iron Curtain crowd live in Muri, not here in Elfenau. It's a commune, they do everything in groups. They go for walks in groups, most likely they're screwing groups as well. But the Gregoryevs are different. Three months ago, he moved out of Muri and rented this apartment on a personal basis. 3,500 a month, George. He pays it personal to the landlord. Cash? Monthly, in 100 notes. The police boys are worried about bombs. They think the Palestinians are gonna blow the place sky high. That's been good and bad for us, George. If we get clumsy, Grigoryev can tell himself for local angels that don't go for the police, you know what I mean? The Swiss police, George, Lori. You need all the protection you can get. Very expensive, but worth it. It's 100 meters on the right, George. Look for a black Mercedes in the forecourt. Other staff use the embassy carpool, but not Grigoryev. Grigoryev drives his own Mercedes. When did he get it? Three months ago, second hand. Same time as he moved out of Muri. They're at home. Did you see them? Bottom window right. We go past again, okay? Once more for luck. No, Toby. George! No. Was that their car? Sure. The very one. <laughs> they love it. They polish it day and night. Grigori ever got herself a driving license two months ago, and she's terrible. But terrible like lousy. You know what Polish Godina says to me? He says, Toby, I need danger money just to follow that woman. Are you ready, George? Change here for all stations east.
Today was a model of last week. Last week was a model of the week before, Giles. Every Thursday is the same. After work, he takes the Mercedes to the garage, fills it with petrol and oil, checks the batteries, asks for a seat, goes home. Six o'clock, an embassy car arrives at his front door and out gets Kraski, the regular Thursday courier from Moscow. Alone. That's a very itchy fellow, Kraski, a professional. But to visit Gregoriev, Kraski breaks ranks and goes alone. Stays a little time, leaves again. Why? Are uh, both of Gregorios there when he calls? Sure, always. Does he bring anything? In the hands, no. Leave with anything? Not visible, no. How long does he stay? A half an hour, maybe more. That's very irregular in a courier, George. It's very dangerous if he hasn't got the protection back in Moscow. George, listen, okay? Watchers imagine things. Well, they got to, it's their job. There's a girl who works in the Soviet embassy visa section. The boys call her little Natasha. Saturdays, she comes to the embassy to work. A couple of times, Grigoriev drives her home. We took some pictures. Not bad. Well, maybe the boys want it that way just because of Grigorieva. Well, you like the guy, George. Well, you know how watches are. It's love or hate all the time. They like him. What do you make of Grigoriev? What is it? Trained hood, Grigoriev isn't, George. There's no tradecraft. It's actually a complete catastrophe. But he's not straight either. He's a half-breed. So which way will he jump when we hit him? Burning, George. It's always a hazard, you know what I mean? I mean, some guys get heroic and want to die for their country suddenly. Other guys roll over and lie still the moment you put an arm on them. Burning, that touches the stubbornness in certain people. So how conscious is he? Oh, what? George, he's Russian, OK? The Russian thinks the butterflies are spying on him. But he doesn't know we're here. Definitely. I wanted lace curtains all the way. If you're following him, ring the changes non-stop. Better to lose him than have him flush. Yes, I understand. Got enough transport? Any more, I get embarrassed. How did the rehearsal go? Smooth as silk. What time do you want me there? Eleven o'clock earliest. Eleven is already too early, George. Grigoriev won't arrive until twelve. I'll be there at eleven. Good night. Good night, George. Good luck.
I'm waiting for Mr. Jacoby. I'll have a cafe creme in a glass, please. If it comes in a glass, you must have schnapps with it. A cup will do just as well. Hans, how goes it? Huh? Schnapps? Perfect. The Grigoryevs left the house five minutes ago. She's driving. Most likely they die before they get here. Did she drive last week? Also the week before. She insists. George, that woman is a monster. Why does he go to the bank now, when there's no one to distract attention from him? He has completely mistaken quiet for security. Grigoriev likes the lunch hour because nobody in tune wastes his lunch hour going to the bank. Empty places, empty times. He's so conspicuous, he's embarrassing. Listen, it's going to be a nice day, believe me. All you've got to do is sit back and enjoy the show. You wrote the script, George. It's your show. Herr Jacobi? Yep. Make that too. <laughs> Ciao. Everyone in position, everyone happy. Morning, ten thousand as usual, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Grigoriev drew his normal 10,000. The same as last week, the same as the week before. You got it, George. The whole scene. The boys are very happy, the girls too. I mean, George, they are fantastic, completely the best. I never had so good. <laughs> what do you think of him? You see Litsy Meinetzagen tell her off for parking? Photographing her all the time. George, I love that girl. <laughs> Where did the Gregorius go from here? Lunch at the station buffet first class. Gregoriev has a salad. She has steak and chips, a glass of beer, and a slice of cake. <laughs> George, the guy will fold, believe me. You never had a wife like that. No, I don't think I ever did. You think he wants to be locked up in a two-room flat in Moscow with that bitch for the rest of his life? <laughs> don't worry. Alessandra Borisova. Greetings, Uncle Anton. Behave yourself. You should buy yourself brown bicycle clips. Repeat to me, please. Your full name with patronymic. My name is Tatiana, and I come from the moon. Uh, two weeks ago, you requested a copy of Torrents of Spring by Soviet writer Turgenev. Have you read this work or not? Mother Felicity was reading it to me, but she has a sore throat. And you have reached what page of this work, please? I lied to you. She stopped reading it to me as a punishment for throwing my food on the floor. Page? 4008. Where do you come from, Uncle Anton, please? Pay attention to me while I make a statement. Until you tell me, my real uncle refused to answer any more of your questions. Who gives you the money to pay for my detention here? To whom do you pass my answers, which you so meticulously write down? Repeat to me, please. Your full name with patronymic. Alexandra Borisovna Ostrakova. How do you feel this week, Sasha? Thank you, Uncle Anton. I've been feeling much better this week. The doctor says my crisis is already far behind me. 
have you received by any means of post, a telephone, word of mouth, any communication from outside persons? Why do you never make love to me, Uncle Anton? You can, you know. Uncle Anton and I are engaged to be married, Mother Felicity. Well, goodbye, Sasha. Until next week, eh? Page 4008. You think you're crazy? Mr. Berakoff, sir, the telephone. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Anslem. Please, sir. Berakoff. The Geneva bureau has just informed us that the managing director is on his way to Berlin at this very moment. With his wife. Unfortunately, Madame is obliged to make an excursion with the children. If you could meet me in the office, Mr. Berakoff. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm a good Swiss friend. Business comes first. I'll pull it with your key, sir. Shall I call a taxi? No, thank you. I'll walk. Yes. Grigoriev left the embassy five minutes ago on his own, wearing his hat and coat. He's heading for the town on foot. What do you say? Where's his wife? Picking mushrooms with the kids in the Elfenau woods. Who's on him? Scordino and the Silsky on foot. Backup car behind, two more ahead. Do we go, George, or don't we? Where's he making for? Town? What do I know? Maybe he goes to see Natasha. We got him alone, George. It's now or never. Who's on the house? Two girls plus Carly Matt on a bicycle. Green light, George. George, we're speaking of seconds here. And on the wife? Pete Egli with two reliefs. The green light. Let's go. 